How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and this special request RPG Maker MV tutorial. I'm going to help William Mayer with something he's having trouble with. He says, hey Driftwood, is there a way to have a summoner class in your party? I mean one that does something similar to Final Fantasy in which the summoner casts the spell, the party disappears, the summon pops up, does its attack, and then the monster disappears and the party reappears. I know there's something similar in which a monster is added to the party, but that is not quite what I'm looking for. So I know what you're looking for, and I've given you this description, but um, it's not that it's hard. It's just a lot of steps, so I thought it would be a good tutorial idea for people who are interested in doing something like that. So I made a couple of spells here. Um, in the party here, I've got two summoners, a warrior, and a white mage, but <clears throat> we're just going to be looking at some of the summoning. Uh, so I've made two uh, summon magics, summon Vampa and summon uh, Chibuncle. And Vampa is like a, a vampire beast that uh, doesn't attack and it does summoning dark magic 25% chance to blind them and it drains HP to the user so we'll use it see cast animation the party disappears the, the heads-up display disappears the attack uh, takes place the party reappears it's sort of something you're looking for I think so let's take a look at the other one let's get that Phoenix down though <clears throat> so the next one's different. It's affecting uh, all allies. This is going to heal the party uh, and add regeneration 50% of the time, which I think I think I added it. But anyway, this is what it'll look like. So we're targeting all allies. Cast animation. The party disappears. And there you go. We got two out of the four got the regeneration effect. And yeah, I mean. So I think that's what you're looking for, right? Um, one last look at uh, a summoner. We'll do the first one again. Not limit first. Summon Vampa. So you'll see that the party members will disappear. Uh, the, the heads of display will disappear. The animation will play. Once that's done, the party will reappear. I think it, it worked out pretty nice. It looks pretty clean. I just started working on Summoner uh, thanks to this request, so um, I'll be adding some more of these probably. But yeah, let's go ahead and um, let me jump into all the things that you're going to need to do to make that happen. <clears throat> you're going to need a few plugins. You'll need Yanfly's action sequencing, you know, battle uh, core engine, battle engine core action sequence packs. Um, pretty much it because you're going to need some uh, editing software basically what you're going to need is um, a 960 by 960 PNG file and you're going to split that up uh, using Photoshop and, and, and that'll select your frames so create a new 960 by 960 um, and then go to your grids wherever you have it and whatever you're using and set up your grids for Photoshop I'm using uh, edit preference grids and slices and go to 90 right here where it says uh, grids uh, guides grids and slices and go 96 pixels by 96 and then uh, if that's not displayed you can press control and comma or I'm sorry control and the quotation and that'll toggle the the display but this is something you're gonna wanna have on you can press control minus to zoom out control plus to zoom in we're basically going to take a piece of art, free transform it, put it into this block right here, and this is going to be the reel of animation. So this is our animation thing that we're going to be using to create an animation. So let's go ahead and open up a new piece of art, right? Let's let's get something we want to be a summon creature, right? We'll get our art. Let's go to side view enemies and find a piece of art. So we would take whatever PNG file we want. We're going to open that up. Let's find something cool. Um, let's let's get the crystal golem. Why not? Boom. So we'll bring him in here. We're going to take this marquee tool here. Is that what it's called? Yeah, re rectangular marquee tool. Highlight everything and press control C. Uh, that, or just copy it, right? Um, copy that selection. Now what we're going to do is we're going to press control shift N, create a new layer. We can merge these layers later. It's just going to help us to be able to move the picture around. Now we're going to use the marquee tool and roughly estimate about inside the frame and then just paste it. 
Okay, now that we've got that, it's on its own layer, so it doesn't matter that it's overlapping. We're going to use the marquee tool and take the whole thing and try to get a selection of as close as we can get without actually cutting anything off. So that's probably good. And then we'll take this movement tool and we can move it around. So now that we've got this, we're going to right click it. Or actually, we have to select it again, don't we, before we can uh, free transform. So let's undo the marquee. Uh, reselect it with the marquee and right click it and free transform why can I not free oh I have to select this here and then select this here and then we free transform that make sure you select the layer it wasn't uh, working because of that once we've got it uh, free transformed we can scale it and move it up and down we need to get it we can still rescale it later on in the engine but right now we need to get it to fit inside one slice so we need to kind of like go up to here and then zoom it in to fit within that without getting any pixels out of it. It's sort of important. You can always control plus to zoom in to make sure that you get it uh, inside that line. You kind of want to make it as big as you can get it while inside the, the line still. So we'll bring it up just a hair. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now that we've got that in there, I feel like we can bring it down just a... No, because of the shadowing and everything. Okay, that's probably good right there. Just like that. So now that we've got him how we want him, you don't always want him to fill up all of the space because of aspect ratio. Sometimes you, you might have extra space on the top here and extra space on the side just to make sure that the aspect... like You know, he doesn't get super stretched out one way or the other. But that still looks alright. So we'll leave that how it is. Now once you've updated, you just add as many creatures as you want inside this thing. And we're just going to file, save as, we'll save as the PNG file and just overwrite that. And But we need to save it as a, uh, well that was the PSD, but we need to save it as a PNG. Uh, so we'll save it inside of our animations folder. We're going to put this file inside of the IMG animations folder and we save that. Once you do that, <clears throat> inside your project, you should go back to your database and see that it, the animations has updated. So if we go down to here and we select that thing, you'll see that we've got a new animation here. So now I can use this inside the animation editor and create a new animation of like 30 frames or whatever. And we'll just set them at 0, at 0, and 100. Normal blend mode. Boom. You know, copy go to like frame 10 or something, paste, go, you know, making the animation is going to take the hard, the, the, the longest. 500%, we'll say blend mode additive there, and yeah, and then boom. So now what we'll do is we'll just tween between cells 1 to, or uh, frames 1 to 10, cells 1, all the data, and it should, yeah, zoom them in. Broom, broom. Right, that's a very cheesy summon effect, but you see how fast that was. And then we have 20 frames extra after that to do, do more. And you could even uh, make that go longer if you want to. Let's delete these 10 frames. Delete all those frames. Okay, let's make it 30 frames. Um, let's see if we can tween the first frame to the last frame. And, and it's the same process. We'll just say 100% right, right off the bat. He'll be normal and he'll blend mode. Edit that, zero, zero. And we can just copy this, go to the last frame, paste it, and then edit, and then just go zero, zero, like 500%. And now he's additive. And boom. And then we just tween it, all the frames this time. Boom. Now when we play it, bam! And add your sound effects, and so forth and so on, right? I'm not going to do all that because it takes about an hour or so. But you can see here this one. I made not too bad I think it looks pretty cool it took a while this one took uh, oh this was a short charge this was the charge anime, which I'm still working on it's not quite right yet it, it needs to sound smoother and kind of not be so abrupt probably make it 20 frames um, that's what you the, the cast the charge animation a and then here's the carbuncle which you see it play five times or four times once for each actor and also it goes the opposite direction you can change how this operates by changing the position 
So if I change from center to screen, it'll play one of them. If I change it to any of the other ones, it'll play one for each target. But I liked, uh, I originally was intending to do it on screen, but I liked how it looked on center, so I left it on center. Uh, and then I did all the sound effects for it right there. Um, boom. So we got a couple of sound, uh, sound effects, a couple of summoned creatures, uh, and then, you know, an effect for the end. I, I needed another effect that I tacked on at the end. So you can add as many animations as you want to the same. Uh, you can have like a hundred animations in one spell if you wanted to. And how you do that is moving on to the next part. Once we've got our animation file updated, we've got our animations created, we can create our skills. So if we go to our skills, you would create a... I have a, my own summoning type, so uh, you go to types and create a new skill type and call it summoning or summoning magic or whatever. You don't have to do that. But I set to uh, summoning magic there. Um, the scope for this one is all enemies. <clears throat> An occasion battle screen. Uh, custom animation was given right there saying cast. The formula, it, it doesn't matter. It's all irrelevant. It's all arbitrary. And it's up to how you want to put it in your game. It's just the mechanics of how to make it work, right? If I wanted to add a state 25% of the time, then I add state right here 25%. It's nothing fancy. Multiple elements to do summon. This is does summon damage and also darkness damage. And here's the action sequence. This is sort of like the magic part of it, right? So we have the setup action. We have, we're hiding the battle, uh, the heads up display, display the action, focus the camera on the user for 30 frames, zoom in 175% for 30 frames, motion, chant, animation, um, whatever animation you want to use to cast. So this is your cast animation. And, and I made that, that uh, green one for it. And then we wait for animation. Opacity, all users, zero, uh, over 30 frames. It's going to make all of the, you ask for everything to be, uh, you know, invisible when the monster comes out. So you, this makes the all of actors invisible. Uh, and then you make the all the targets immortal so that they can take all of the damage if it's multiple hits and they don't die midway. Um, and then it, you take that off at the end. And since this is an all enemy scope, we do whole action. We're going to reset our zoom over the next 10 frames, motion the user to do a spell, and then we're going to do animation 5, 7, 6 on the targets. This is also the animation that I'm selected right here. So you could just do uh, action, animation, and it should do the exact same thing, and then you wait for animation. You can, but you saw how you, uh, you do it the other way. You can always just do animation, number, colon, and then the scope where, where you want the animation to play. Um, but action animation will call this animation to play. And then we action effect, which does the formula and whatever that is. And then we take off the immortals, immortals so that if they've dealt damage, they can die. We perform finish, and that's the end of the whole action. But we still did some things, right? We're still zoomed slightly. We still have uh, the heads-up display and, and everything. So we have to do a follow action. So we're going to reset our zoom over the next 20 frames, reset our focus, opacity, all actors. All of our actors are still invisible. So I'm... To make them visible again, you say opacity, all whatever the scope, all actors, and then 255 is completely solid again. And then comma over the next 30 frames. Clear the battle log, perform finish, show the heads up display, show battle HUD, and then close the follow action. That's the sequence for Vampa, but you can write that down, copy, uh, and then copy paste it for the next one, except change a few things. Like on this one, the actors actually come back sooner because there's another, an and then I play a another animation. So this is where it would normally end, but then we have uh, the uh, the opacity all actors would actually be closer here, but because I need to play an animation and do this effect to actually do the healing, I'm playing five, seven, eight, and then I'm bringing the, the party back to be visible, and then I'm playing five, seven, nine for the healing thing. And that's basically it. I mean, nothing uh, fancy, uh, but it's it takes a little while. If you get stuck, uh, right-click, go to Plug and Help, and then go down to your right here. Yep, X, Action Sequence Pack, and then you've got all this stuff to read right here. Skim through it. You should uh, get a little bit of an understanding, but use some... Um, Find some examples. There's some on my website for free. Just use some basic examples and then just add one line at a time and test it and see how it looks, and that'll really... Um, that's the best way to go about it little by little and test it. So basically, I think that's pretty much it. You you create the, uh, you get the art you want for the creature, you add that to the PNG file. After it's added to the PNG file, you um, put it into your, your uh, IMG um, animations folder. Um, then you create the animation in here. 
where this is the big part of it right there, you know, then when you do the skill, you call on it and use an action sequence to, you know, decide what plays and, and you can do as many combinations of stuff you want, a different, a different combinations of moving users around and, and uh, just doing everything, really. Action sequencing is awesome, but that's basically the answer to it right there. I also decided I need to do some balancing here, but that's uh, that's it for the video. I um, I believe that's all you really need. Um, hopefully, I'm not forgetting anything. Um, yeah, if you did like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, smash that uh, th uh, like button. I'd really appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I've got RPG Maker MV content, Game Maker Studio 2 content, tutorials. I do first impressions videos, quality assurance, beta testing. Uh, I work on my games, I play classic JRPGs and strategy games and whatever I want to do. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you everybody who's backing me on Patreon. I love you all. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.